Today I want to talk to you about a fun little project I've been working on for quite some time now. And it's this custom computer mouse built from scratch. You might be wondering, what's the point of building a computer mouse from scratch? Well, there are many reasons. One of them is that you have many options of building custom keyboards like this one, for example, this one, or even this one, which I built in a different video. And you basically don't have the same option with computer mice. Now that you know why you would build a computer mouse, let's look at how you would build a computer mouse. First up, let's look at which parts build up a computer mouse. First up, of course, is the case. So the case encloses everything um, and it also defines the ergonomics of the mouse. So the second part, if we open this up, is the circuit board, which connects all the components like the sensor here, and the different buttons, uh, encoder, and the USB port. There is also a third component, which is firmware, and it runs on this tiny little chip here. Firmware is basically how we define all of these different components uh, to work together. So now that we know which parts the mouse is built up from, let's look at each one of them individually. Let's start with the PCB. The job of the PCB basically is to connect um, all the components together so then that firmware can operate with them. The first thing in uh, creating a PCB is selecting the appropriate components. One of the most important components, of course, is the sensor itself. These sensors are pretty rare. Uh, it makes sense to select the sensor first. I chose this PWM3360 uh, one. You can find one on AliExpress pretty easily. So now that we have a sensor, we can also look at what other parts we need. The obvious next part is, of course, the USB. So, um, that's one of the components, although you can't like physically define it almost because it's a protocol, but uh, it's one of the requirements of the uh, microcontroller. Next item is the encoder, which is partially defined by the case itself and partially by the mouse wheel. So this mouse wheel is actually from a different mouse. I think it's from like Logitech, Logitech one. You, you need to check that uh, it's compatible with the encoder and of course with your case. The last component which we need to uh, worry about is the button itself. So this is also from AliExpress. Uh, so a normal mouse button. The next thing to select is, of course, the microcontroller. This microcontroller controller needs to support up to three buttons, the sensor, and, of course, the encoder. Once we have all the parts selected, uh, the next thing is to open up KiCad and start creating a schematics. If you don't know how KiCad operates, the first thing is you connect all the parts just schematically you don't need to worry about the physical appearance of the PCB at this point. You just connect individual parts, how they logically need to be connected. Um, so once you do that, you turn these schematics over to the PCB bench and then draw the exact PCB as you physically want. Now, there are quite a lot of things which you need to worry about when creating a PCB. I won't go into detail here, but essentially what you need to do when creating a PCB is just arrange all the components on the board how you want them. For example, you want buttons to be in the right places, you want the encoder to be where the mouse wheel is, and of course the sensor needs to face the ground. It's also smart to put the USB connector up front instead of pointing to the desk. So now that we have the PCB defined, how do we man manufacture it? There are quite a lot of online services. Uh, I used JLC PCB. Also, they offer assembly service, which means that they uh, assemble all of these small components for you. Here's the finished PCB. Uh, how it looks like when com when it comes into the mailbox. Okay, now that we have the PCB manufactured, let's look at the other component, which is the case. 
I designed this case in Fusion 360 because it's the tool that I'm the most comf comfortable with. Ideally, I would make something in FreeCAD and also the way I look at it now, I would also create a shape that's not that complicated so that you could print it at home. But essentially how you create a case is just you, uh, you model the basic shape. So uh, at this step, you just care about the ergonomics. Move on to the surface workbench in Fusion, Fusion 360 and you hollow out the shape with surfaces. So you get all these pockets and you define where the buttons are, you define uh, the different parts of the case which touch the buttons. So then again, how do we manufacture this thing? Because the shape of the case has a lot of curves, we can't just use a normal 3D printer. We need to use a more suitable technology, which as it turns out is also available through JLC PCB. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by them. So now let's look at how would we develop the firmware. The firmware obviously runs on this microcontroller. We need a way of programming it. We need a way of communicating with the sensor, uh, reading the state of buttons, reading the state of encoder, and then processing all of this uh, information and sending it via USB port to our computer. Aside from concrete requirements, I also wanted to have a few extra requirements, which are modularity, evolvability, and readability. But I guess this doesn't matter for this video. First things first, we need to grasp a few concepts, like how does the USB device work? How does the SPI protocol work, which is the protocol which uh, we use to communicate with the sensor. Lastly, how do we read the state of the encoder? There are lots of options for writing firmware for microcontrollers, but frankly, half of them suck. <laughs> I chose libopencm3 uh, for my first draft and writing C is pretty easy uh, once you know the concepts, although uh, C has a few of its food guns, but um, yeah, I mean, developing in C is pretty fast. Uh, so once I had everything working, I knew that mouse is doable, but I wanted to explore the firmware world a bit more and also focus on the three extra requirements which I uh, mentioned earlier. Long story short, I chose Rust, not because of all the crazy features which uh, Rust folks advertise on Reddit. I mean, those are nice, but I don't really care that much about memory safety for a computer mouse because for a firmware, most of the time you don't even use dynamically allocated memory. Why did I choose Rust then? Well, in my opinion, the biggest feature which Rust has, and it shouldn't be exclusive to Rust, but it for some reason it currently kinda is, is that they have well-defined interfaces for working with different peripherals. You have this single Accardor abstraction layer a library, uh, which is called Embedded Hull. The point is that if I wanted to, for example, add wireless functionality to my board, I could just use a different microcontroller, but two thirds of my code of my firmware would still be usable on it. So how does the finished firmware look like? I implemented it in form of a library. You have one part which focuses on sensor, different part which focuses on encoder, another different part for buttons, and these parts only depend on the interfaces which I mentioned. And then I have the main logic, which is specific to this PCB. Essentially, this is just one main function, which runs an infinite loop. So here it is, a finished computer mouse, which is ready to be used. You might be wondering how reliable is it, or is it even usable? Well, I've been using it as my daily driver for almost a year now and haven't come across any major issues. If you're interested in more details, uh, I'll put a link to the GitHub repository down in the description. The repository also contains uh, generated files for uh, ordering the PCB. What do I plan on doing with this project in the future? Currently, not much because <laughs> I'm 
out of time with everything. But um, once I have some time in, I don't know when, I plan on expanding this firmware as a library for doing just computer peripherals in general. Because, for example, you need a lot of things which keyboards need anyway. So adding a support for reading the keyboard matrix is not that big of a deal. One of the, the things uh, if there is interest and if I'll have time is also adding uh, wireless support and more features like that. One thing which I would change immediately, as I said, is also the case. I mean, I kind of like this uh, how it is, but it would be cool to have it created with FOSS tools and uh, also being easier to manufacture. I'm aware that I missed a lot of details throughout this video, but as I said, if you're interested in the nitty gritty, check out the repository. If you would like me to talk more about specific parts of the mouse, like the PCB, firmware or case, please leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. Anyways, that's it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed, subscribe if you want and goodbye.